Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Chemical Process Design, Design Basis, Part 2. In this video course, you will learn the design base of plant capacity, how byproducts of gases, base products will be handled, feedstock and product specifications, utility specification and site conditions, principles of design information, safety and environment. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. In the part 1 of the design basis, you understood some of the aspects of the basis of chemical process design. In the part 2, I will walk you through the remaining parts of the design basis. Plant capacity. This section of the document describes the products to be produced and the technology to be used for manufacturing each of the products. For example, let us consider that the plant is set up to produce three products. Products A, B and C. Product A is produced from raw materials 1 and 2. Product B and C are produced by using the product A as a feedstock. So this is an integrated production facility. For each of the products, the design basis specifies the technology to be used, the production capacity in metric ton per year, the plant operating hours per year, and the feedstock to be used for the products. In addition, there are other factors to be considered in the design depending on the process technology in determining the annual plant capacity. Non-reactive system and reactive system. Non-reactive system. In this process, there are no reactions involved and chemical processing involves only processing of the feedstock using separation processes. Examples of this process technology include simple refineries, only fuels and no cracker, and natural gas processing. Shown below is an example of non-reactive system, a gas processing plant. In non-reactive processes, the production capacity for the design basis remains the same during the operating life of the plant. Reactive systems in this process, one or more feedstock undergo chemical reactions followed by separation processes. Performance factors such as conversion, selectivity and yield determine the technology competitiveness. Reactive systems fall into two categories, non-catalytic and catalytic. In non-catalytic reactor, the design basis assumes annual plant capacity to be the same during the operating life of the plant. In catalytic reactor, the design basis considers two cases. Catalytic reactors with a deactivating catalyst and catalytic reactors with non-deactivating catalyst. In the case of deactivating catalyst, even with periodic regeneration, the catalyst activity gets reduced after say two years. Hence, the production capacity may fall towards the end of the catalyst life. This has to be considered in deciding the design basis as start of the run SOR or end of the run EOR. EOR case based plant capacity will be higher to take into consideration the catalyst's deactivation. In non deactivating catalyst, the plant capacity is usually taken as the same until the catalyst is changed over. Byproducts and waste products handling. The design basis also considers how the byproducts and the waste products in the process will be handled and disposed. The process may generate along with main products, byproducts, off gases, and waste liquid streams. In 
In some cases, the byproduct can be sold directly as a valuable product or by conversion to saleable product by simple technologies. In other cases, the process generates liquid and or gaseous waste streams which must be disposed in environmental friendly manner. This will be clearly specified with the proposed disposal and treatment processes. Raw material and product properties. Raw material and product specifications are important part of the design basis. Field stock specifications should include minimum and maximum concentration limits of the components. The minimum concentration of the principal reactant should be specified. The maximum allowable composition of impurities should be specified. For example, if chlorine is a feedstock used in the process, then the minimum concentration of chlorine should be 99.75% and maximum concentration of the impurities should not be more than 0.1% oxygen and 0.15% CO2. The physical properties such as specific gravity and vapor pressure in the case of liquid feed should also be specified. Product specification. The product specification should specify the minimum concentration of the product for guarantee. Maximum concentration of impurities should be specified including water content. For example, if the product is allyl chloride, the specification will be as shown in the table below. If byproducts are produced or converted to saleable products, their composition should also be specified. Utility specification and battery limit conditions. Utility supplied to the plant should be a part of the design basis. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your Spec eLearn channel is a one-stop learning and skill development channel for your career. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button right now. Utilities include cooling water, demineralized water, steam, condensate, instrument air, plant air, nitrogen, fuel, etc. The specification of the utilities are important for design of the steam heat exchangers, water coolers, reboilers, and condensers. Specification of air is needed for designing instrument air system for plant automation systems. Specification of nitrogen is needed for blanketing and pipe purging requirement in the plant. Typical specifications of utilities for design basis is as shown in the table below. Cooling water supply temperature 20 degrees centigrade and return temperature 33 degrees centigrade and supply pressure 5 bar G. Medium pressure steam is 15 bar G and low pressure steam 3.5 bar G. Nitrogen purity should be greater than or equal to 99.5% and pressure 7 bar G. Specification for electricity is high voltage 3.3 kV, low voltage 415 volts and frequency 50 Hz. Also important is a specification of demineralized water and cooling water. For example, the typical specification of DM water should include the following as shown in the table below. Typical specifications of cooling water should include the following as shown in the table below. These are important from scaling and corrosion point of view with respect to cooling water coolers, condensers and boilers. Site conditions this aspect of the design document describes the site conditions based on which the plant will be designed. The site conditions include maximum or summer ambient temperature, relative humidity, winter and summer, minimum or winter ambient temperature, 
maximum, minimum and average wind speed, design wind speed, rainfall, site elevation above the sea level, earthquake history and earthquake factor. Pressure vessel design information. This section of the document describes pressure vessel related information to be followed in the process equipment design. The design basis document will describe how the design pressure and temperature will be determined from the pressure vessel internal operating pressures and temperatures. Material of construction will be specified depending on the service conditions. Line sizing criteria is specified. Corrosion allowance depending on the service will be specified. Instrument related guidelines such as pressure drop, control valve size related to the line size etc. will be provided. Vessels and tanks. Vessel hold up volume during normal operation is specified for vessel design. For maintenance purpose, manholes and handholes are needed in vessels and tanks and towers. They are specified for individual equipment depending on the size of the vessel or tower. For the towers, the design base specifies whether the specific tower is a tray tower or a pack tower, the type of tray or packing, the turndown ratio, number and size of the manholes for internal installation and maintenance, etc. As regards heat exchangers, the design base specifies the type of heat exchanger, DMA clause, fouling factors to be used in the design, pressure drop, tube layout, square pitch or triangular pitch, temperature approach for cooling water coolers. As regards pumps, the design base specifies the pump selection for a given service including the type of pump, sealless pump or pump with mechanical seal, the type of drive, standby arrangements, etc. For compressors, the efficiencies are specified. The design basis for the storage tank include the number and size of manholes for inspection and maintenance. Dryers or dehydrators and towers are used in the separation processes. The design basis for the dryers include types of adsorbents, dry cycle time, dew point at the outlet or outlet moisture content, maximum pressure drop allowable and adsorbent life. Vessels shall be provided with vents and drain connections for emptying and depressurization for inspection and maintenance. Also specifies a connection for utility services. Safety and Environment This section of the document describes the process emergency related safeguarding philosophy. If the facility has flammable liquid storage tanks, there is a potential hazard for leakage and as a consequence fire as well as vapor cloud explosions. This should be taken care of in the design stage and should be part of the design basis under safety aspects. Shown in this figure is a hydrocarbon storage tank with pumps installed for supplying liquid to a reactor system. The vessel has a huge inventory of flammable liquid. The mechanical seal failure is a potential hazard. To mitigate the risk, the tank is provided with an ROV at the pump section line close to the vessel outlet nozzle for isolating in case of leaks. The valve can be closed from DCS panel. Another important consideration in the design basis is closing of control valves in the field during emergency shutdown such as power failure, utilities failure and manual emergency trip activation. Yes to trip action will act on the control valves and its bypass valves. Also included in the design basis is the safety instrument system SIS and the SC levels. Environmental compliance. The plant design shall comply with local environmental regulations as applicable. 
emission from boiler stacks, flash stacks, waste liquid discharges, and emissions from leakages shall meet the environmental laws. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.